It was time for the women to act. My name is Heilbrunn, and I found it very interesting that there is a city in Germany with the very same name. It's not spelled the same, but it certainly sounds the same. Now the story I'm about to tell you takes place in the town of Weinsberg, which is about four and a half miles away from the city of Heilbronn. It takes place in the year 1140. Now Germany way back then wasn't like the Germany we know today. It was made up of a lot of different states. And it was under the Holy Roman Empire. So the kings of Germany were selected by the Holy Roman Emperor. And that king's task was to get everybody to pledge loyalty to him. Well, King Lothar II had died. And the person that was selected to replace him was King Conrad III. And the first thing he did was he got his armies together and he went to all the different states, some which were already loyal to him, some which weren't. And he got all the states to pledge loyalty and the final one that he had to get to pledge loyalty was that of the Duke of Welf. Now Conrad III's family and the Welfs had fought for many, many years. And it finally came down to the, where the Duke of Welf was holed up in a castle right in the village of Weinsberg. And so the king took all his troops all his men, and he <coughs> took laid siege to the castle. He surrounded the castle, and he sent a messenger in. You will pledge loyalty to me, or I will burn your town down and kill everyone that lives in it. Well, the Duke of Wealth had been prepared for this. He had gathered lots of supplies. He had plenty of food. He had plenty of water. He had even made secret passages so that he could send servants and messengers out to bring in more supplies when needed. Well, time passed. And as time went on, the king became more and more impatient. So he sent out his soldiers again to seek out any secret passages, to block every road that went to the castle. Now the Duke of Elf had a problem because his supplies were running low. King Conrad was getting even more impatient. So he sent a messenger to the Duke and said, you will pledge loyalty and surrender by daybreak, or I will set fire to your entire village and put every member of the town to the sword. Well, it was now time for the women to act. And a meeting was called. I don't know who called the meeting. I don't even know if the men were invited to that meeting. But after a discussion and whatever went on in that meeting, a group of women went from the castle to meet with King Conrad III. And they didn't beg for, beg for mercy for their husbands. They begged for mercy for themselves and their children. Now the king wasn't totally heartless. And he agreed. He said, the women and children will be allowed to leave. And he had some compassion for them because he said, I don't want you to leave destitute. I, when you leave, gather whatever possessions you have that you feel are valuable and whatever you can carry on your back, that is what you can leave with. Well, this, this is what legends are made of. Because the next morning as the gates open, the women walked out with their children. Now, did they carry extra parcels of food to help nourish them along the way, or kegs of water and drink so that they could soothe their thirst on their travels? Did they carry gold or jewels or, or some income so that when wherever they went, they would be able to survive by building a new life? No. On the back of every woman was every husband, brother, uncle, every man of the village. Trudge they did, but forward they went. Now the armies were furious. They felt they were cheated. They told the king that he should destroy everybody, burn the town to the ground, kill everybody. The king had a 
different point of view. He was very impressed with the loyalty those women felt for their husbands and for the men of the village. And they had followed the agreement that he had made. Anything they could carry on their back was theirs to keep. So he decided not to burn down the village and let everybody live. Now his compassion in that decision had a second benefit because the Duke of Belf then decided to pledge loyalty to the king. And the king and the Duke of Velf, well, they worked together for a while at least. Now, if you were to go to Germany now, to the village of Weinberg, you will find that the castle still exists, or the ruins of the castle still exist. It's been renamed, it's now called Berg Weibentreu, which can be roughly translated to Castle of the Faithful Women. And in the center of that town, there is a big statue depicting the men and women and their leaving the castle. As a matter of fact, this is a picture from Weibner. I'll leave it around so you can see it afterwards. But this is a statue in the center of town where it shows the women carrying all the men. And it's very easy to find. It's only four and a half miles from Heilbronn. 